Hi, it's Steffi from San Diego Craft Collective. Today I'm going to show you how we make this pencil box with the craft kit that you have. So let's get started. In your kit you should have all of these items. So we have an 8 ounce hammer, a small dowel, six nails, a piece of sandpaper, some glue, and then some pieces of wood. So we've got the top. Let's start by spreading these out. The top has a hole drilled in it here and that's going to fit your dowel. We have two sides to the box. We have a bottom and you'll see that mine has a bunch of holes in it already because this is reclaimed wood. So I don't mind too much because these are going to get covered and I'm helping the environment by using a piece of wood that would have otherwise gone to the landfill. So you won't even see those and for this piece on the bottom I just turn it over or I could put it on the inside of my box. It's your choice if you have a piece of wood like this. The other thing to keep in mind is if you have a knot and we try to make sure that you guys are not nailing into knots, um, so we try to look at every single piece. But if you have a knot like this, you'll just want to make sure the knot is the hardest part of the wood. And to try to nail into this is really tough. And probably what will happen is your nail will just keep bending and failing and you won't be able to get it in. So what you can do is just come down a little bit lower and put your nail down here instead of right into the knot. Okay, so the first step that we're going to do, oh and I also have a little paper towel that's been dampened so I can wipe my fingers off when I get glue on them. The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to take our sandpaper and I'm going to fold mine in half because I'd like it to be a little bit smaller. I never use scissors to cut sandpaper because it'll dull your scissors. So I just keep pressing this line here and it makes a crease and then you can just tear it kind of like you do with a piece of paper. Another thing that works really good is to sand your other pieces of wood you can wrap this piece of sandpaper around one of your end pieces and you can use it to sand all of these pieces of wood. So I'm going to sand all the sides of this except the ends. The ends I'll leave um, without sanding because the ends are going to go on the outside of the box and when we glue up the box and nail it all together we can sand this outside once everything's all put together. So I'm just going to sand the parts that are a little bit difficult to access once this box is all together. It's really hard to get your hand in here and sand this properly once the, the sides and the ends are on. So I'm going to sand all of these And make sure that your work surface is not a precious table or something that mommy or daddy will um, be upset that you're working and gluing and hammering on. So um, I've got this sturdy work mat on a work table. So if you have a workbench or even your driveway would work really well. Just make sure it's a spot where nobody will be upset that you're going to be doing all of these messy things on the table. And also when you're sanding, you really want to be outside and not inside the house. So that piece is sanded. And you'll notice as you're sanding these, they get really smooth. It's feeling really nice. I'm going to sand this one.
Now I'm going to go and sand the inside bottom of my box. I want to make sure I get out all of the scratches and any rough spots. And I want to sand the inside of my box. So when you look at your box, this hole will be over to the right. That means this is the top of your box. And it has to be that way because if you try to change this, you'll have to make sure you change this. And the way I'm going to be doing this in the video is we're going to glue this one and nail it like this. And then later we're going to put this top right on top of it and we're going to line up these two holes. So we want to make sure that these holes are right on top of each other. So if you switch this around, you can do that but you'll need to make sure you switch this around too. So it might be better to just follow the instructions that I'm doing, and I've made sure that I picked the nicer top of all of your boxes to be this the nicest side up. So I'm gonna wrap this around my piece of wood again, and I'm gonna sand the inside of my lid because we can sand the outside after this is all put together. But we just want to sand all the parts that are hard to get to once this box is nailed and glued together. I also, I'm going to put a little chamfer on this edge. So I take my sandpaper and my sanding block and I go to a little bit of an angle. And if you notice these holes in the bottom, don't worry about those. Your wood probably won't have those, but these, this is just a recycled piece of wood. So those holes are actually not part of this project. I'm gonna put a chamfer here. And a chamfer here. And a chamfer just eases the edge of your wood. So now I don't have any sharp corners here. We have a fly on camera. And these are all sanded on the insides. We also want to make sure that our glue joint is really... This is the part of the side of the box that's going to go down and join with this bottom so we want to make sure it doesn't have see like that little piece of uh, fuzz there we want to make sure it's all clean and it's going to have a good bond with the bottom piece of our box so now i'm going to get some of this dust out of the way and i almost forgot to sand this block so I'll switch my sandpaper to this guy, and this is the inside, so I'm going to sand this a little bit. So let's mock this up. I could also do a little bit here. You can see a little bit from the table saw blade when we trimmed this wood. It left a little bit of a mark called a machine mark. And this is my end piece. I can also just take the sandpaper and keep my finger really flat. I don't really want to round over the edges on this. I want everything to be pretty square. And I'll put this in like this this and like this. I really want to make sure that I'm lining everything up as much as possible with the bottom piece. And this feels like it's going to go together pretty well. 
Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to turn everything over. And all of our pieces are probably going to um, fall over if we try to just turn it. So I'm just going to set this down like this. Turn this guy. This is where my bottom's going to go, but I'm going to place this over here for now. I'm going to take my bottle of glue and open it up. And I'm going to put one bead of glue just a little line down here. And I'm also going to glue this. So remember this piece is going to go like this. So I'm going to glue one line here. Whenever we glue pieces of wood, we always put a little bead of glue on both surfaces. And then I just take my finger and I rub that glue so that it's all along here and I have it all the way to the outside. And then I'm going to do the same thing here. Set that aside. I'm going to rub the glue, spread it out, I should say. I'm going to spread this glue out on this piece of wood and spread it out on this piece of wood. I want it to go all the way to the edges. And I don't want to have too much glue because glue makes wood pieces kind of slippery until it dries. So now I'm going to put these together and I'm feeling with my finger and my thumb here to make sure that the ends are lined up and I'm also feeling right here to make sure the sides are lined up and I can just put my fingers in the end here and push things out or in depending on which way it needs to go. So these feel like they're pretty good. This feels like it needs a little bit more alignment. Okay, we're ready to hammer. So I'm going to take my nail, and my hammer, and I'm going to set my nail not too far in because remember this is the thickness of our wood right here so I want to make sure that I'm right in the middle of this if this was my side this is a good guide so you know where the middle of that wood is so I'm going to try to hit right in the middle of that wood which would be about right here and I'm just going to do a few little taps and I'm going to press down on this so that nothing falls apart and I'm going to tap this all the way until it goes down flush with the wood. That was fun. Now, things might move a little bit when you're hammering, so you want to double check. This still feels pretty good. This side feels like it could come out a little bit. And now I'm going to do a nail in this side. I'm just going to try to go straight across from this other guy. This gives me an idea of where my center line is. So I'm going to come about right here. Ooh. I'll let that hammer get away from you. I'm going to do a couple of taps before I remove my fingers. Now this nail, I can take my fingers away because this nail is standing up by itself. I'm going to press down here and I'm hitting with this hammer straight down. I'm not hitting like this. If I hit like this, my, my nail is going to bend over this way. And if I hit like this, my nail is going to bend that way. So I want to make sure I'm hammering straight down. All right, two nails in. That's enough for the bottom. Now we are ready to put 
put in our ends. So remember, this is the bottom. So we wanna make sure that this hole goes up on the top. So this piece is gonna go here. And I'm gonna put a little bit of glue on the bottom here. I'm also gonna sand this because I can see there's a little bit of machine marks from the table saw. I'm gonna sand it nice and flat. Blow all that sawdust out of the way. I'm gonna put a little bit of glue here. Yep, that's the right side. And spread out that glue. And spread out this glue. And I can do the ends as well. So if you have a little extra glue, you can put some glue on your ends. My side was a little bit tight here, so when we get to the other end, I'm gonna have to use a little muscle to get them together. So now, I've got this here, I'm gonna put this on its side, I'm gonna use one more nail here. I wanna make sure that I'm in the middle of this um, piece of wood here, because my nail's gonna go through the side and down into here. And since I drilled a hole for my dowel, I wanna go a little bit lower than I normally would. If I go here, I'm gonna probably nail into my dowel hole. So I wanna go a little bit lower and also try to find about the middle of that wood, which I think would be about right here. So I'm gonna hold this and do a couple of taps now that, hand, that nail is standing straight up and down and it's in by itself so I can really hammer it down and I'm going to hammer straight down. And I can feel that one in so that looks good. I'm going to flip it over to this side. There's no hole here so our nail for this side can just go straight in the middle and I want to make sure that I'm right in the middle of the piece of wood, so about right here. I'm gonna hold this and do a couple of taps. And that wood, uh-oh, I think I had a little hole in the end of my wood so that wood split, but that won't happen with yours because we made sure not to give anybody uh, recycled wood that has holes in it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna move a little bit over so that we're not in this hole. So I'll move right up here. I'm just feeling here to make sure it's flush, that I've hammered it in as much as it needs to go. Good news, I didn't come through on the inside, so that looks great. And now we're ready to put this end in this side. So I'm gonna sand a little bit the glue edge. So this is gonna go on the bottom. Just wanna get some of those machine marks off. I'll put a little bit of glue here. And we'll put a little bit of glue here on the inside. And then we can rub this, or spread this out. Spread this out. So all the way to all the edges.
And maybe I put a little dab of glue here and a little dab of glue here. And spread these out. This is optional. This is called the end grain. And when you try to glue end grain, it doesn't hold very well. So this is gonna be your best bet. This edge grain will hold really well to this. And like I said, it's a little tight here. So I'm gonna open this guy up a little bit. And if you have trouble, you can use your hammer and tap lightly here to get this to go down. So then I'm just, that looks pretty good. I've got my two uh, nails on this side. Now we're gonna work on this end and I've got two nails left. So this end, I don't have to worry about any holes here. So I'm gonna go right in the middle here, which is about here. And if you wanna make sure that you go in the middle of your board, you can pick your spot and look at it like this. And I'm looking for the middle of this end piece. If I'm over here, what's going to happen? I'm going to poke through on the inside of the box. And if I'm over too close to the edge, I'm probably going to end up coming out that this end grain here, and then I'll have a nail showing on the end of my box. So it's really important to get your nail straight up and down right in the middle line here. So that looks pretty good. I'm going to hold it straight up and down. That nail looks really straight, so that looks good. I'm gonna turn it over. And my last nail here. I'm gonna go in the middle here and in the middle of this line here. So right about in the middle of that piece of wood. I'm going to hold that there. A few taps and now it's standing straight up and down. There it's flush. All right so you want to make sure that the bottom of your box that these nails are really flush because if they're sticking out and you put this on somebody's really nice tabletop, it's gonna scratch that table. So we wanna make sure that these feel flush. We're almost finished. So now the top is gonna to line up with that hole here. So you can put your eyeball right here and check that out and make sure that those holes are lining up. Yep. So what we need to do is just put a couple of drops, not a lot of glue. If you put too much glue in the hole, there won't be room for your dowel. So you can test out your dowel and see if your dowel might need a little sanding. And it looks like my dowel is a little tight. So it feels okay in this hole, but I think it might need a little sanding. So here's a trick if your dowel needs sanding. I'm gonna use this piece of sandpaper that I've already used. I'm just going to sand this whole thing. I turn a little bit and go back and forth. And turn a tiny bit and go back and forth. Turn a little bit. And if you want it, have a raised surface you can put this sandpaper on top of your lid to your box and this might give you a little bit yeah this is easier if you notice you're getting a flat side just make sure you turn it a little bit so you're not doing too much on the flat side because we really want it to stay round. So if I see a ridge on my flat side, I'm gonna come right here and sand this part now so we can keep it round. So I'm gonna put that part down on the sandpaper. 
And now it looks like this part is a little bit high, so I can come and put that part down on the sandpaper. Okay, that looks pretty good. Let's see if that fits. Yep. We don't want the dowel to be loose in the hole, but we also don't want it to be too tight. And it feels pretty good here. So I can kind of move it, but it's a little bit hard. And I have pretty strong fingers, so. And I can also hear the wood kind of making like a creak creak sound. So I know that it's, it's pretty good. So you can kind of see how I've sanded the end of that. Now we'll want to sand the other end because it also needs to fit into the top here. So I'll flip it around. This is the side, this is the end we first sanded. I'm going to flip it around and sand that other end. I'm looking for those ridges right there. I have a little ridge right here, right here. Okay, let's see if this fits. It's pretty tight, but it feels good on this side. So, you just need to, the other thing you can do is, uh-oh, don't push it in too far because you know what happens is you get your dowel stuck. Oh, I got it out. If you push it in too far, your dowel won't come out and you'll have to get pliers or maybe your parents help to get it out. So here's another trick. We can also tear, if you wanna sand this hole a little bit, you can tear a little piece of sandpaper off and you can roll it. You can roll it this way or you can roll it this way. I'm gonna roll it long way so that I can hang on to it. And I can stick it into the hole. And then I can sand this hole. Because this side seems bigger than this side, and that probably won't happen on your box, but on mine, that's the case. So, just rolling up this sandpaper, I'm just gonna sand a little bit. And turning the sandpaper every once in a while is a good idea, too. So, turn it a little bit. Okay, let's see if this fits better. Yep, it fits better. It's pre still pretty tight. If it's too tight, what can happen is your wood might split. But, whoops. Let's see if we can sand this a little bit more. And we can sand this guy a little bit more. So now I'm trying to sand the fat little body part in the middle of the dowel. We did a pretty good job of doing the ends, but now the middle, it's a little bit like a little sausage. So I'm rolling it as I'm doing this. And if you have a hard time hanging on to it, you could try something that you might have at home, like tweezers or something to hang on to it. Oh, this looks a lot better. Okay, so we've got our dowel to fit. Now we're ready to glue this thing together. So there's a couple ways we can do this. We can put, first we're gonna put just one little drop or two little drops of glue in this hole. 
I'll try to angle this so you can see how much glue is going in there. So just about that much glue and we don't want to glue this part because this part needs to pivot. So we want the dowel to be tight here, but not glued. Otherwise, you essentially have just glued a lid onto a box you will never get into. So you can do this. You can tap this down like this, or if, and I've already stuck this in the hole, so now it has a little glue on it, so I'll wanna wipe it off to do this method so that no glue gets in here. I can line these up and I can tap all the way through the top with my hammer. So it's going through here. And I just set the, I set the hole over the middle of the box right here, just so I could get a little bit of the dowel to stick out. And that way that will help me find that other hole a little bit better. There it is. So I felt it kind of go into the hole. See, sliding around, oh, there it is, that's the hole. What happens when you hit this dowel head, or the end of the dowel, is it's gonna mushroom out a little bit. So that's why it's probably the best idea to put this in the top and do it all at once. And you'll notice that the sound of the hammer changes once my dowel's in, so listen to the sound. There it went. And this is going to need to dry for a little bit, but that is our pencil box. Once your glue is dry, then you can open and close it. But while the glue is dry, we just want to leave it resting for a little bit. And this is a good time to clean up any spilt glue and make sure your the top of your glue is all cleaned off so that when you do more projects, the glue will come out. And now we can take some time to sand some of these outside edges. So I can fold, if I use my sandpaper like this, it, it gives me a little bit of trouble. So you can do it, but it's just easier if you fold it in thirds. So I do one, two, and then use this side to sand. And when you do it this way, this gives it a little bit more traction. It doesn't fold up like it was doing before. And I can sand my entire box. I like to make sure I get rid of any little fuzzy pieces on the edge. So remember the chamfer we did? I do the same thing on these corners so that they don't feel sharp when somebody picks up my box to admire it because I'm pretty sure everybody's gonna think your box is really great. I'm also gonna break this edge. This edge feels pretty sharp to me and if I run my finger just right along it, I might get a splinter. So to avoid that, we can just put that chamfer on here. And then I'm gonna do the same thing on the end. And same thing on this side. Same thing on this end. Flip it over, same thing, all four sides. And then don't forget your four corners. You can come like this. You can kind of wrap your sandpaper around it like this. You can actually really round over this corner if you like to. You can round over this corner. Do all four of these. And like I said, you can keep going and you can sand the end of this. If you wanna find another block of wood, maybe outside or at home, or you could wrap this around um, a deck of cards, that would work anything that's flat and square um, or you can just do it by hand like I'm doing so 
I just hold on to my box with one hand and sand with the other. And you should do this in a space that's probably outside or in the garage, in the backyard, or in your driveway. And you can get all this wood nice and smooth. And then once you're done with all of your sanding, you could paint this. You could color on it with crayons. You can do whatever you like to personalize it. And once your glue's dry, it'll open like this and you can put your pencils in here. Or you could keep your glue in here. Or I wonder if our hammer would fit. No, no luck on the hammer. But our glue will fit. Thanks for watching. Check out more of our classes on our YouTube channel, San Diego Craft Collective, or you can look at our website, www.sandiegocraft.org.